Hi and welcome. In this video, I'm sharing a few of my best tips for using the Notion app on mobile and tablet. I'll start with a couple of tips to get you going quickly. And after that, I'll compare the mobile and tablet and how in my experience, they have their own strengths and weaknesses. Be sure to stick around for the end where I show a couple of power tips like using Notion side by side on tablet and hands-free usage. Even though I've been working from home for the last nine months, before that I used my tablet to go from meeting to meeting and take quick notes. Now I mostly use it to work around the house. <laughs> Let's dive into five tips for better note taking in the app. First tip, create an inbox page and favorite for quick capture. There will be plenty of times when you can't dig through Notion to find the perfect spot. So this will allow for quick capture with minimal effort. Just make sure you check your inbox daily. For example, during your morning routine, as I mentioned in my other video. Second tip, use Templates. Save time by using templates to set properties and tags, allowing you to pick things like coffee questions, meetings or daily stand-up to save time filling in details that usually are the same. Also keep in mind that it's easy to remove things, so by adding things like a list of people that should attend and removing who couldn't make it, it might be faster than adding everyone every time. Third tip, use toggle switches. They are easier to rearrange on mobile and allow you to hide details, giving you a better overview on smaller devices. It will also help a lot when reviewing notes if you make sure that the parent layer summarizes the content, meaning you won't need to read everything to get back on track. Your future self will thank you. Sometimes if you press enter, you get a soft enter, meaning you are working in the same block. Just hit enter again to get a new entry. Tip four, get a Bluetooth keyboard. A good one like the Logitech K380 can be had for around 35 euros and will make things a lot easier. Be sure to pick a full size keyboard as a smaller keyboard will cramp your fingers and get in the way. Now to save some space, remember it doesn't need a numeric pad. Unless you crunch a lot of numbers in Notion, not something that usually happens when taking regular notes. Using a Bluetooth keyboard with your phone is probably the cheapest way to upgrade your phone to a full-fledged note-taking solution without having to shell out for a tablet or laptop. Tip five, pick a side. If you happen to have a tablet with a pen, Notion doesn't allow freeform writing, though you can use handwriting to text on Android and scribble on iPad to turn writing into text. Do however pick a side. If you want to scribble, use a different app for that and add the resulting image to Notion in the end. Switching between Notion for writing and a pen for drawing takes up a lot of mental energy and means you're fidgeting with your tablet during meetings which you don't want. Regardless of method, it might be useful for you to use the built-in mic to do some recording if you really want to be able to review everything later. Don't forget to ask permission from your co-workers though. With the tips out of the way, let's go to the couch so I can talk devices. Now, each device has its own use cases. A phone, for example, is always at hand and excellent for quick capture of ideas, simple note taking, but limited because it only has one column. So you can't use something like a Coronel note system where stuff is left to right or anything where you want to put information side by side. I would mostly refer to my phone for information that I already got in my system or dumping stuff into my inbox that I can then process later. Now, a tablet allows for more space, columns side by side, and if you happen to have a pen, you can use handwriting to text recognition to add information straight into Notion. Unfortunately, Notion lacks the capability of making drawings straight into Notions. So if you want to do that, you have to juggle between some app to do the drawing and then importing it to Notion later. Editing is still tricky though. Add a Bluetooth keyboard, however, and it becomes as close to a laptop as you're gonna get. Remember that you can also use a Bluetooth keyboard with your phone if you only have a phone to work with, getting a simple Bluetooth keyboard might be the best upgrade you can have to make notes on the go without having to shell out for an expensive tablet or laptop. Now that we're done with devices, let's look at the app and limits that you need to keep in mind. 
mobile devices are limited by their design there's only one button and you use that to scroll up and down your screen so notion has to get creative on working with this environment and one of the things that they do is that they allow you to switch between a keyboard mode where you're typing and entering text and a view drag mode where you can move the box in notion around now if I look into the app you can see the two modes into effect. So currently I'm in the drag view mode where you can just see everything, there's no keyboard inside and I can hold my finger somewhere to drag stuff up and down and place them wherever I want. If I tap somewhere it goes into edit mode and the keyboard slides up. Um, this is sometimes confusing because it slides over whatever you want to edit so you might need to drag to see what you're typing. Pressing enter I can say something like hi there to add like an extra line, but I can't drag stuff because if I hold my finger somewhere, it will get into the copy and paste mode where I can copy text and move it around, but I can't move the blocks. If you want to move back to the drag view mode on the bottom right, there's a small keyboard icon. If you press that, you go back to the drag view mode and you can move and rearrange stuff to your heart's content. Now, one of the issues that I was hitting on the mobile device is that you can't really move more than one block at a time. So if you look into the interface and I click somewhere, then it always drags one and there's not really an option where you can say like, I wanna move two items up and down. There's two small workarounds I have for that. The first one, if you happen to have a physical keyboard, then you can hold the shift key and arrows up and down to select multiple blocks. And then once that's done, you can still drag them up and down as one. If you do not have a keyboard, the only other option is using something like outlines, tasks, or toggle lists, where you can assign basically one thing as a parent and then just move the parent around. So for example, if I have like this list and I'm going like, hey, I wanna move doing to do and hi there, I move to do and hide there up, making them like a child of the doing parent and then clicking on the parent, let me move back to the moving option, allows me to drag them all at the same time. It's not ideal, but it will work in a pinch. And if you happen to keep your notes in an outline where everything is ordered, it allows you to rearrange a lot of the subtext easily. One of the things that often get overlooked but work very well on tablets and phones these days is voice recording. And as I'm talking to you guys right now, it's also writing everything out and putting it straight into Notion. Now, it's not perfect and very often you'll have words that aren't totally matched or aren't like picked up. But the general gist, about 90% of it, is so good that afterwards you can easily just go through it with a keyboard and just fix the typos as long as you don't wait like three weeks to check back on your notes. Super useful and as long as you're in a quiet environment or at least some place where it doesn't have to pick up other people talking, it works tremendously well. One of the problems that you often hit on a tablet is that you can multitask, but you can't open the same app twice. So if I open Notion and I basically put that onto the side screen, well, I can go, for example, to settings and have two things open. If I go to the main screen and I go to Notion, I just get Notion back. Now, the simplest solution for this one, and it's often forgotten by a lot of people, is that you can put Notion to the side and then open Notion on your web browser. So my web browser is Kiwi, but you can use Chrome, Edge, Safari, whatever you have on your system. And that should work fine. I'm going to a new tab, picking Notion. And now if I go back to my application view, put Notion to the side and have that one there, as you can see, I have Notion to the right and Notion to the left, allowing me to have two pages open on the same screen. Depending on your browser, you might wanna switch to a mobile site or switch to a desktop site, and this makes it easy enough to work together. If you enjoyed my content, then there's more videos on the site, and be sure to like and subscribe so others can find my videos as well. Remember, you're awesome, keep it up.